Um, do you recommend under or over? I am worried about animation. Oh! Wind me up and let me go. That's mm. what you've just done there. I am this little clockwork toy that you have just gone. Okay, so much to talk about here. Um, can you do quick fire? Can I do quick fire on this? I cannot. Oh. Sorry, this is too good a question. We've got okay. so many questions to get through. Okay, all right, I'll, I will speak fast. Well, that, I might do it in Italian, because that was really fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, under, uh, okay, breast implants. We don't want you to be able to see your breast implant through your body. So we don't want you to see the edges, we don't want you to see ripples, you want it to look like there's no breast implant, you've just got wonderful bosoms. Right. If you have got enough padding, two centimetres or more, enough padding, then we can put them over and you still won't see them. However, if you don't have two centimetres or more padding, somehow we need to get more padding in there. One of the ways of getting more padding so that we don't see the breast implant is to go under the muscle, because now we're not just thinking about the skin and fat thickness, we're thinking skin, fat and muscle thickness. So it conceals the implant at the top anyway, where the muscle is and where it's most, where your breasts are more socially visible. You wear dresses, but you don't see the underside of the breast usually, except in some really kind of more exotic outfits. So that's the main thing. Hang on, if under gives us more padding and less visibility of the implant, why don't we always do that? Well, under has a downside. And the downside of under is this thing called animation deformity, which is the muscle, when it contracts, such as when you're moving your arm or your shoulder, normally just contracts down against rib cage. The rib cage doesn't get squished or anything and you don't see any difference. But if you put an implant under there, now the muscle is contracting down against breast implant, which will flatten your breast implant, which will flatten your breast. So you can be carrying heavy shopping or in the gym doing that kind of thing, and your breasts will flatten as you do it and then they'll unflatten as you stop. That's called animation deformity, which isn't so cool. So if you can avoid going under the muscle, we avoid going under the muscle. If you can't avoid going under the muscle, then there is at least a way of going under the muscle called a dual plane technique um, in which you minimize animation deformity. You don't take it away completely, but it's less pronounced. If you want the best of all worlds, there is a third way, actually. There is a third alternative. I said, if you don't have more than two centimetres of pinch thickness, we need to do something to thicken that soft tissue envelope. And one of the ways is to go under the muscle because you include the muscle. I said one of the ways on purpose because there is another way. And the another way is to fat graft your breast. Fat grafting is where we take fat from elsewhere in your body by liposuction. And then we fat graft into the breast area itself, into the breast itself, to convert it from a breast that was less than two centimetres thick to one that is more than two centimetres thick thereby changing it to one which was unsuitable for implants above the muscle to one which is suitable for implants above the muscle. And then we go ahead and put implants above the muscle. Uh, and that's called a component or sometimes called a, comp a composite breast augmentation. It has many other advantages to it too, but I've been told to keep it quick and I failed and I'm increasingly failing. So there you go. Um, if you're worried about animation, you want to be thinking of a way of going above the muscle if that's your real problem, uh, if that's your real, real concern. We can reduce it but not remove it by going dual plane um, and in that case you, we will need to fat graft. Now you may not be suitable for fat grafting, sometimes I want to do fat grafting in a breast and you've got a BMI of 19 or something which means you're really really slim and you just do not have an ounce of fat and if that's the case then we've got to compromise on something and it'll be one of those other things we talked about.